Hello and welcome to how to create a perceptual map using Excel. My name is Jeff and I'll walk through the process with you today. As an alternative, I already have a free ready to use Excel template which is you can make perceptual maps within minutes and that's available at perceptualmaps.com over here. Today I'll be showing you how we can make this sort of perceptual map within a one or two minutes. The first thing you need to do is set up your data. So you need a list of brands, at least two attributes, the attribute scored, and then if you want to, this is optional, you can include a market share. Then we're going to insert a, a chart. So it's insert, other charts. I like to use a bubble chart because that works quite effectively as the output. Just move that to the side. I have no data at the moment. I need to select the data. Unfortunately, perceptual maps take a little while to set up. So what I want to do is add the series. Series name is, click there, is the name of the brand. I then click on that button again, it brings back to the to the overall edit series menu. I just repeat that. The second point is the first data point. So X values is sweetness, Y values is the caffeine in this case. And I just click on that number. And the bubble size relates to market share. And then I simply OK. I have all the data there for Coke. I then simply repeat that process and do it for Pepsi and so forth. I will just pause now. OK, I've just gone through and added all the series. So we have all the data there. I'll just move that out of the way. At this stage, this is what our map looks like. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting quite close. You can hover over any of the cells and you can see what the series is, what the two attributes are. So for Diet Coke, it's one and four, and the market share. So if you've got something that doesn't look right, you can just scroll across, check that it's picked up the right data. Our next step is to format the axis so they look a little bit better and more like a perceptual map. To do this, we, we go up to the chart menu. If you don't have the chart menu, watch the menu change. I've clicked outside the graph, so I have less choices. To, I click on the chart, it brings up the chart tools menu. Here I click on layout. I go to axis. I'm going to do both of these. So I'm going to do the hor horizontal axis first, and I'll come all the way down to options. I want to set it fixed and fixed. I'm using a scale of 1 to 5, so I've just gone one outside of that to make sure that the circles, when they appear, will have space outside. We'll get rid of the numbers later, so that's not a problem. I'm also going to change these things to none, because I don't want any lines or symbols on there. I just want a plus symbol right in the middle of the graph like a normal perceptual map. And to make sure to bring the axis up to go through the middles, I'm going to make that 3. I use 3 because I'm using a scale of 1 to 5 and 3 is the midpoint. So if I was using a different scale, say 1 to 9, I would use the midpoint which would be 5 in that case. I then repeat the process for the vertical axis. So that's been automatically set to 5. I'm going to make it changing to 6 so we have a nice sh square shape. And again, both of these set to none, and that goes through the middle as well. Now I have something a little bit closer, but I've got these funny lines. These are simply the grid lines. They're going horizontally. I don't want any. So now I have something resembling a perceptual map. So my next step what I would like to do is put the brand names in the middle of the circles okay, rather than here at the side because it might get confusing if you have a lot of brands listed here. To do that, make sure I've got the chart menu up. 
I go to data labels and I go to more data label options. As you can see, it's been set to the Y value. Okay, so as I've, as I've done that, it's actually brought up the Y value of all of these things. What we need to get to is changing it to the series name. Okay, so you can see there for Coke's been brought up. The four actually relates to Diet Coke next to it. So for each one, I simply go through data labels, more options. I want the series name. I don't want the Y value, and I'd like it to have it have it in the center. And I simply repeat that, which I will do now. Okay, I've just finished inputting all the changes there, and we have a perceptual map which is looking a lot closer. I have a duplication. I have the brands listed here and in here as well. I don't want this at the side. I just click on it and hit delete. The last thing we need to do is label the map effectively. So we need to give it the access names and the name of the map. To do this we go up to insert, click on shapes, select the rectangle, not the text box, put it where you want it, so at the side here. While the box is still open, go up to the function area, hit equals and click on the attribute and hit enter. This first attribute here runs horizontally. You can format that box a little bit better by going home, making it, changing the font color, centering it, and then going across the format and maybe making the color a little bit different. We put the top one in as well. It says format, shape, sorry, insert shape, rectangle, up here. This one's equal to caffeine in this case. We then go and quickly format that. So they look the same. Okay, we can do the same thing to put our heading in. I'll put that there. In this case, it's simply called my map. I might make that look a little bit differently. So I'm going to center that but make it a lot larger so it stands out. Essentially, that's our map. If you want to format the colors, click on the map to bring up the new menu, go to design, and you've got lots of options here about the colors. So any of those will simply change how it's presented and you have a quite a large choice. If you want to highlight one brand in particular, let's use Coke, click on it by itself so that circle's highlighted, go up to format, shape fill, and we'll choose their corporate color and it makes it look quite large and stands out. So basically that's how you can construct a perceptual map. I have a template already set up on perceptualmaps.com where you can enter up to 25 brands and there's ideas for different uh, attribute labels and there's lots of examples as well.